everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to do 2.5 storing memories. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to start with the CED question for 2.5, which is explain how memory storage processes retain information in memory. So we're going to look at how do we do that? What's the essential knowledge you need to know to be able to answer that question for the exam? We're going to have some key terms that we're going to go through in this video, but I'm also going to do a separate key terms video like I normally do. So if you really like these videos, please, please like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I'm actually trying to get to 10,000. I know it's a slow process, but hey, whatever, we can try, right? Um, but maybe you can help me get there. So let's get going. Okay, so we're going to talk about introduction to memory and storage processes. So basically, the overview is we're going to explain the role of memory storage in retaining information. And we're going to look at sensory memory, short term memory, working memory, and long term memory. So let's begin with sensory memory. So the definition of that is just brief storage of sensory information lasting only a few seconds. An example is that lingering sense of an image after you look away. So here, information is held for a very short duration, typically just like I said, a few seconds. It acts as a buffer for stimuli received through the senses, which are then processed at an incredibly fast rate. Only the most important or striking stimuli are passed on for more in-depth processing. Okay, we're going to look at short-term memory and working memory. So short-term memory is when information that attracts attention in sensory memory moves into the short-term memory. So the STM, or the short-term memory, holds information temporarily for processing and is limited in capacity. It typically holds it about seven plus or two items. So information here can be retained longer through processes such as rehearsal, which we're going to talk about. I think actually we did talk about that in the last video. Then we have working memory. This is an active stage where information in short-term memory is manipulated. Working memory is used for cognitive tasks such as problem solving, reasoning, and comprehension. It integrates information from the short-term memory with data retrieved from long-term memory. Long-term memory. Let's look at the different the different types. We have declarative, which are facts and events, or we have procedural, which are skills and tasks. Some of the characteristics of this would be long-term storage with potentially unlimited capacity. So let's look at long-term memory. Information that is repeatedly rehearsed in the working memory gets transferred to the long-term memory. Long-term memory has a vast storage capacity and the information can be stored for extended periods of time, from hours to a lifetime. It's where knowledge, experience, experiences, facts, and figures are kept. Now let's look at maintenance versus elaborative rehearsal. So maintenance rehearsal and elaborative rehearsal are two different strategies used to encode information into memory each with distinct approaches and effectiveness in long in term of long-term retention. So let's start with maintenance rehearsal. Maintenance rehearsal is a process of repeatedly verbalizing or thinking about a piece of information. This type of rehearsal involves a shallow processing of information, which includes basic repetitive tasks such as rote repetition. It helps to keep information in short-term memory or working memory, but is generally not effective for long-term retention, unless used extensively. This approach is useful for memorizing data that may not need to be retained for a long time. For example, like a phone number or just a simple list, like your grocery list. Elaborative rehearsal, on the other hand, involves a more meaningful analysis of information. It includes associating new information with existing knowledge and expanding on it by adding details or linking it to other memories. This type of rehearsal leads to deeper processing, which enhances the likelihood that the information will be then transferred to your long-term memory. It's more effective for long-term retention because it creates a more complex association between the new information and what we already know. The key, the key differences here are it would be the depth of processing. So maintenance rehearsal is a surface level processing method, while elaborative rehearsal involves a deeper cognitive processing. So retention for as far as retention, elaborative rehearsal is generally more effective for long term memory retention. And about if we look at the effort and engagement that we have to put into these elaborative rehearsal requires more cognitive effort 
and engagement with the material, making use of the techniques like forming mental images, examples, or constructing theories, whereas maintenance rehearsal is less engaging and involves just simple repetition. So elaborative rehearsal is typically recommended for studying complex material, such as academic content, such as like studying for your AP psychology exam. And it not only helps in retaining information longer, but also aids in understanding and then applying that knowledge more effectively. Now let's talk about biological basis of superior memory. Some individuals have a condition called highly superior autobiographical memory, which allows them to remember personal experiences in great details. Research suggests that these abilities may be due to unique brain structure or functions, particularly in areas like the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex, which are critical for memory. This implies that biological factors, potentially including genetic influences, may play a significant role in these enhanced memory capabilities. Now, don't we all wish we had this? This would be so useful when we're studying for our APs, right? So now let's look at memory and personal connection. We're going to talk about autobiographical memory. This refers to our ability to recall personal experiences and events in vivid detail. So these memories are definitely more enduring and can be easily recalled because they have an emotional or personal significance. So for instance, the memories of, let's say, like a wedding or a really significant birthday, those are often remembered in better, in greater details because they're, they're important. So you have that emotional impact. We're going to talk about impairments affecting memory storage. So you need to know about the different impairments that can affect our memory. It really does demonstrate how vulnerable our brains are. So memory impairments such as amnesia, and you need to know both retrograde and anterograde, and I'll put those on the key term videos, Alzheimer's disease and infantile amnesia, these illustrate the fragility and limitation of memory storage. So these conditions affect how memories are formed, stored, and recalled. And again, that highlights our brain's vulnerabilities. And that's all I have for 2.5 storing memories. Hopefully that helped you understand the CED question that we talked about in the beginning and you have the essential knowledge. Like I said, you can go to the um, key terms video now and you'll get the key terms, the definition with real life examples to help you know how to apply them on the AP exam. If you like this video, please like and share. We're trying to get those numbers up. So that would be great. Thank you so much. Have a great day. See you next time.